Welcome to Meditation and Aliens with Doro and Matt, a webcast that explores everything we currently know about the truth about aliens, human history, reality, consciousness, and the role meditation can do to help us understand all these things, and how we might all work together to build the best world possible for all beings, human or non-human alike. Meditation and Aliens is hosted by me, Matt Reddy. I'm an amateur ufologist. I have a degree in philosophy. I'm the creator of Hive1.net, an experimental social discussion platform for truth seekers and activists. I'm the author of a book called Revolutionary Mindfulness. That's about meditation and activism. I'm also an elected public hospital commissioner in Jefferson County, Washington. Each week, I am joined by Doro Kiley, longtime meditator, meditation teacher, and an experiencer with many stories and life coach extraordinaire. You can find more about Doro at her website, creationcoach.com. Now, on to the show. We're here. How's it going, Doro? Um, It's going great, and Happy New Year to you, Matt, and all of our listeners. Yeah, Happy New Year. We're up to episode 14 of this this fun podcast. What do you think about that? Yes, we are. We're we're moving along, and uh, and the way it's showing up on my channel is getting getting pretty good views on my YouTube channel. So uh, let's keep moving along and get people in and educate everybody. You've got so much good information to share every week. I'm really looking forward to these shows just to find out what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, and our plan today was to focus on. The legendary Stephen Greer, who's been involved in this uh, alien UFO discussion for many years. Um, so he's going to be sort of our focus topic for today. Um, That's a good be- one. <laughs> yeah. But before we get into, was there anything in particular you wanted to check in on besides uh, Stephen Greer today? No, I think I'm pretty ready to go into to the subject of, of uh, Mr. Greer or Dr. Greer. Um, yeah, he's he's putting out a call. It sounds like in, in one of his latest uh, videos, um, a, a call for support. So maybe we'll get into that later in the show. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, well, OK, before we, we focus on Stephen Greer, I just wanted to talk about uh, something else that's sort of uh, really going on in the news not it's not directly ufo alien or meditation related it's bitcoin and um and it might come up again but uh there's this thing happening called the uh, the bitcoin etf it's uh it, the 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 cryptocurrency world has been uh pushing for the creation of a bitcoin etf which is an exchange traded fund um which allows people to uh, buy Bitcoin on a stock exchange. Basically, it uh, makes it really easy for institutions and everything to to buy um, to buy Bitcoin. And anyways, this thing it seems like it's gonna, about to be approved. And this the the really interesting thing that connects to the UFO alien world for me is that BlackRock, the one of the most the biggest wealthiest corporations on Earth, with like ten trillion dollars of assets under their management has decided this year to create, to participate in this and create a Bitcoin ETF under their management. And long Hmm. story short, you know, if there's a, a group of people behind the secret keepers hiding the uh, truth about aliens, controlling Lockheed Martin and Raytheon, which is, who's controlling Mike Turner, Congressman Mike Turner and Mike Rogers, and basically our Pentagon, you would think that group is probably one of the wealthiest, most powerful groups on earth. And that would mean BlackRock might be that group. So interesting. You're making that connection. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, so basically it's possible that the, the UFO alien secret keepers are right now joining the cryptocurrency Bitcoin world in a serious way, creating a basically a fund that will allow billions and billions of dollars of people's money to be used to buy Bitcoin and put it into their possession. So they will now, that's how these funds work. You know, the BlackRock will take your money 
and buy Bitcoin and they will hold the Bitcoin and allow you to just, you know, benefit from the price appreciation, but they are holding the Bitcoin. So it just sort of creates a, you know, if these secret keepers really are hiding the biggest secret in human history and what are they going to do the day the secret comes out? Do you think, you know, they might just take the Bitcoin and run or oh, transfer my. it to, you know, uh, there's no no reason they you know if if these secret keepers and these aliens are real then the whole concept of countries and borders are not necessarily that meaningful to them mm -hmm. they might be based right now in the pentagon in the usa so but maybe they can just shift over to china and just and you know anyways there's so what, it's a question what what is your inclination then to to do with uh i know you have a little bitcoin and i do so what what do we do with our little shares? Is there anything to that, that you would recommend? Well, I don't want you to recommend anything, but what would you do? Oh, I, I think uh, think of all your options. I mean, you only have so many options. If you have, you know, if you have someone has like, I don't know, $20,000 in savings, I would say uh, Bitcoin is the best currency on earth to keep your wealth in. Um, but it's, you know, it's uh the crazy world so i mean um i'm you know so i i think bitcoin is actually is the future of money so i think in in 50 years bitcoin is going to be the foundation of the global economy and other cryptocurrencies will be used but um we're right now in a weird transition phase and you know i mean us dollar is a horrible asset it's it's just they it's just print, suffering, yeah. yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. they printed like four trillion more dollars over the last few years. The U.S. literally has to pay a trillion dollars in interest every year on their debt. It's and you know yeah. the whole Bitcoin market is a total right now of only like eight hundred billion dollars is uh, the market cap of Bitcoin. And so, I expect Bitcoin will over the next, you know, one to five years will. You know, I I expect it's going to go up in uh, value tremendously, and but I mean that's why I think BlackRock and these big corporations are finally realizing they have to take a piece of it. They have to actually just start grabbing as much of it as they can because I think they've realized they're not going to be able to preserve their wealth by holding U.S. dollars because U.S. dollars right. is just going to keep on inflating like Argentina. Yes. Um, so do you do you think this uh, if this is approved, it's going to trigger a bull market? In yeah. yeah, yeah. I think if it uh, if it gets approved, I think it's you know there's going to just be floodgates, and there might be a pent up a, a huge pent up demand just waiting for the the Bitcoin ETF to get approved, and it might get approved. It might get approved today or Monday. It's it's literally there's a deadline. It might get delayed a month. You know, you just never know but yeah. um but yeah i think time to get in huh <laughs> well it could be fireworks uh -huh. i mean and it and if it and so it's like i'm i'm just so i'm i'm so ready to just watch this to see what happens it might um and it it's going to be weird cuz people are used to the bitcoin bull market to to be a bubble sort of that goes up like last time it went from uh i think it went from as low as thousand dollars all the way up to sixty nine thousand dollars and then it came back all the way down to like fifteen thousand and so right now bitcoin's back up around forty three thousand five hundred and so it could spike literally in the next month to well over a hundred thousand and it might even do something crazier than that and then <laughs> but it might come down it it, it might do some crazy up and down fluctuations. I don't, you know, it's one of those. It's hard it to so guess. Hard. Yeah, it's, it's <laughs> yeah. so hard. And and now that institutions are buying it, um, you know, it's unclear whether or not they will ever sell it. You know, the all these institutions and in Black like BlackRock, if they've been waiting so long to be able to buy uh, as much Bitcoin as they can, it's. I don't think they're going to sell it after they buy it. They're 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 going to buy it for ten years for. 20 years they're buying it because they need to protect themselves against yeah. mass inflation so i don't people might be expecting it to if it shoots up to say 500,000 they might all 
people might even long-term holders might start selling a bunch of their Bitcoin to take some profit because they're going to expect it to come back down at least to like 200,000, but it, it might not, it might not <laughs> it's come a down again. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, well, the longer it's around, I think the more stable it becomes. And, and I think that's why these other, um, you know, huge corporations and countries are looking at it. The older it gets, the better it's looking. <laughs> and it's going to be interesting just to see how it evolves on earth, you know, cause it's like after world war two, if you look at who, what countries owned gold before World War II and which ones afterwards, it was World War II resulted in a massive shift in ownership of gold. And the U.S. ended up with supposedly a ton of the, the gold on Earth. But then the um, then I think it was Nixon took us off the gold standard. So, he, right. he, you know, he, he took us he stopped having our currency backed by gold. Which meant that was the anyway. beginning. That was the beginning of the dis destabilization, I think. Would you agree? Well, well, yeah. I mean, it means it meant the currency was backed by nothing. So they could just yeah. print it. And so it was sort of unclear whether gold mattered after that. But it's, you know, countries still hold gold. Um, but, you know, but then, you know, the thing about gold is you don't know if they really have it. Like, I think Fort Knox might be just empty. I mean, who knows if that gold is actually there? It's all all these liars out there that are behind the scenes. So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So case, this is going to be interesting. This is going to be yeah. very interesting. Interesting Any day times. now, right? Yeah. Sorry. What? Yeah. Just interesting times. Mm -hmm. um, how this is all playing together. AI, cryptocurrency, Bitcoin, aliens, all these things are, and robots, Tesla bots, all these things are happening at the same time. And, uh, yeah, we're, we're kind of going into the unknown here. Um, a great teacher said, we're just going into the don't know. <laughs> so. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Well, so in any case, let's, uh, let's go to our focus topic of the day. And uh, Stephen Greer. Yes, uh, yes. Disclosure advocate. Um, how would you introduce Stephen Greer to our audience if they are unaware of this guy? Okay. Um, Stephen, Dr. Stephen Greer, he, as far as I understand, he uh, is the uh, head of an emergency department. He's a, he's an active physician. Well, he may be out of it by now, but he ended up, I think, back in the very early 90s, taking an interest in this because his father was somehow uh, involved in uh, you know, NASA and, and aeronautics and, and space and, and I guess ETs would come up in, in conversation from time to time, which perked his interest. So um, I think something happened, uh, this was long after his father died, where he became aware that there might have been some uh, extraterrestrial intelligence on this planet. And I think one thing led to another and he started gathering information and he became a hub this is just the way i've understood it a hub of information so after gathering a certain amount of information people started to see him as a place to give your information to for if you're a whistleblower or something so just to get your words on the record um, he was apparently interviewing a number of whistleblowers over the years. He, he says to date, it's been over a thousand whistleblowers. So uh, I don't know if he's a practicing physician anymore. I think he's putting his full time into um, trying to organize all this information, trying to get it out there uh, and, you know, working in, in the legal system and what have you, trying to trying to break this baby open. He's more concerned, actually. Uh, he's not as concerned about extraterrestrials, but rather the technology that we have cracked from downed, uh, downed uh, vehicles that, that ETs have apparently had uh, visiting us. And, and that our government, I don't know, it started back in World War II or something where we started back engineering this technology. 
and it ended up becoming a underground secret program branch, and I think it was right from our own government, Pentagon government, um, that that this became a secret organization that even even the president didn't even know about. Uh, and apparently they've had zero point energy, um, you know, free energy that that they didn't want to release to the public because they can see the corporate value. You know, it would disrupt the entire uh, oil industry and everything globally. So this is his main concern is to get these um, technologies back into the hands of the, the public uh, if they're even in existence. And he, he knows they are. He says they are. So um, he says most of what we're seeing out there in terms of UFOs or I guess UAPs, they call them now, unidentified aerial phenomenon. Um, most of what we're seeing is is actually from Earth, from here, from this secret program. Uh, and they have some nefarious agendas and what have you. So, so he just is the kind of a go-to guy who has collected all of this information. In fact, he's looking for help to compile and um, create a website, a portal for public information. Um, and he says, you know, there are there are only three ways, if I can remember, uh, three ways of managing this. Um, problem of having this secret program. You know, a lot of these whistleblowers testified in Congress this past summer, and so it's starting to open the gates. Um, but he says, he says, what we really need are open hearings under subpoena, not in a skiff. We also need some kind of a law enforcement SWAT team to <laughs> go in there. I don't know. This is all, all of this information is in his latest um, video for the end of the year, kind of a compilation of information from 2023. Um, so he, he's approaching this like we got to crack this baby open before we can re even worry about ETs. So, um, so that's Dr. Stephen Greer. Um, how, would would you add anything to that, Matt? How would you put it? Well, let's see. Um, yeah, he's been in this a long time, mm -hmm. and he you can find interviews uh, from him for over the last I don't know twenty plus years, maybe thirty years. Um, he one of the um. He teaches people how to uh, use meditation to possibly call UFOs and the non-human intelligence to communicate or visit, um, called CE5. Um, and uh, there's an app on an I on the iPhone or on the phones you can get to that sort of teach you how to do this. I think they have guided meditations on there, and they they help you network and find other people that do this exercise and you know some people apparently have success with it um he says he says that basically none of the aliens are hostile to humans uh which is which a lot of uh people in the ufo community um they find it very strange that he says 100 percent of aliens and non-human intelligence are are basically enlightened and good and want what's uh, want peace with humanity, but that the bad actors are uh, humans and the secret keepers on earth, which is, it's a very interesting assertion to make with such confidence. That is. Yeah. I haven't actually heard that. So yeah, I'll, I'll uh, keep my ears open for that. But yeah. yeah. Well, and what he's, you know, he's, I've never heard him address um, the idea of there being a non-human intelligence that has been coexisting, cohabitating on Earth with us. You know, the idea of possibly some sort of, uh, you know, reptilian species or something that has been, because um, it seems to be, from all the research that I've looked into, it, it seems that there's more than one non-human intelligence and that there, you know, it seems to me there is evidence that the most powerful non-human intelligence is one that does not come from earth or it doesn't 
live mainly on earth they have you know uh and they are they you know they are sort of uh they you know and i'm hoping they are enlightened and want what's best for humanity and they're just waiting sort of waiting for us to figure stuff out and achieve peace on earth and trying not to interfere in a massive way but that there could be a much less evolved less powerful non-human intelligence that's living on earth uh, that possibly was here even before humans possibly a reptilian species that's been living uh, in antarctica and, and underground bases on earth and that might be the ones that are possibly participating in some of these less pleasant activities and uh doing because because there's so many people that are frustrated with Stephen Greer saying that all aliens are friendly because a lot of people have experiences that seem to be connected to the phenomenon that are not pleasant, that are abductions, that are non-consensual. Um, yeah, are... This is interesting because he, he believes that all of that is from this secret program that's actually us, you know, the military and, and, so he says every, all the nefarious mean, you know, mutilations and abductions, these are all coming from this secret arm of, of this uh, program, this secret military program. So, and I've also heard him uh, talk about malevolent beings interdimensionally. He says it's get, it gets very difficult to comprehend because we're talking extra dimensionally interdimensionally we're talking timelines and you know it, it's it gets very convoluted once once you start trying to follow the threads um it's not just our linear consciousness that we're dealing with apparently yeah well yeah i haven't i haven't heard him uh, say that about um interdimensional but that's good to know i mean i guess the point is you know he is saying there is some group doing abductions uh at yeah. least he's not denying that the uh, i've heard him you know at times i've I, it sounded like he was denying the abductions occurred but maybe not maybe no he was just maybe he was just denying that they were done by aliens he's saying yeah as far as he, i understand yeah yeah because he definitely says that the 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 part of the U.S. government that is hiding this, they have. He says they have fully functional anti gravity flying saucers and things like that. And um, I can't remember if I'm getting it confused with uh, Linda Moulton Howe, um, which uh, one of them, or if not both, I, I can't remember. They say that the um, the U.S. Space Force actually has full fledged uh you know uh, ships that can go interstellar that can go faster than light they um but I, I can't remember if Stephen Greer said that was something he confirmed or if that was uh, someone that Linda Moulton House so a little he definitely says the US government has anti gravity crafts that um can do all sorts of stuff and um that we yeah, I think he says that we solved anti gravity many years ago Oh, it was the energy. year I was born. <laughs> oh, really? 54. Yeah, that's what he Gosh. says. So that's been a long time. He said if if they had not confiscated all this technology, we would be living like the Jetsons. Do you remember that cartoon? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Interesting. Yeah, definitely. Um, so, yeah, I, I mean, he is he is saying that that a lot of this stuff. In fact, this um, last video that he did kind of a summary of 2023 uh brings up you know a lot of a lot of this so you know everything you're saying has he sort of re reaffirms in this um in interview that he does for 2023 if lis listeners can go ahead and listen to that they'd be all up to date <laughs> yeah i mean we could even we could play it if we wanted uh during it's this pretty time. long it's a, about an hour and a half actually okay well we won't we won't play it but um, on the YouTube channel, I now I stuck up a picture of uh, Stephen Greer. Mm -hmm. um, but so here's another interesting thing about Stephen Greer that is just sort of fascinating. If because he is not in the club of the other UFO alien disclosure advocates of uh, people like Christopher Mellon, Lou Elizondo, David Fravor, uh, David Grush, uh, Brian Graves. And uh, 
And in particular, he and Lou Elizondo apparently hate each other. And hmm. it's unclear. I mean, and, well, and I mean, I, I guess it's kind of simple. Um, maybe it's not simple, but it's kind of weird that they hate each other. And it, um, but, but Stephen Greer says that Lou Elizondo is a government agent. Um, he says, but I mean, and, but I, as I've looked at this, it actually kind of makes sense that Lou Elizondo is working for the government in this, this whole time. Cause it, if now that if, I have a picture I'm putting up on the screen that shows the major advocates of alien disclosure uh, in the government. And you got a bunch of people, senators and congressmen, but you have Lou Elizondo, David Grush, David Fravor. Um, Are you sharing your screen right now, Matt? Because I don't see oh, it. I'm showing it on YouTube. I'm not sharing it on. Oh, uh, OK. Yeah. But okay. I uh, but, you know, I think actually I could. Uh, da, 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 da. Let me see if I share that and share something. Yeah. All right. So you could you should be able to see now. I do. I see it now. Okay. Yeah. So uh, Christopher Mellon, I'm showing there, and he's former Deputy Secretary of Defense. He's like the highest ranking pe person to come forward, non elected official, to say something going on. And he's clearly with Lou Elizondo and Commander Fravor, David Grush, and this guy also, Rear Admiral Tim Galladay of the Navy, is the highest ranking military officer to come forward, and Ryan Graves. All these guys, and also uh, can't, Alex uh, Heinrich up here. They all seem to be on the same team and they, they, they seem to me, it, it just seems so likely that they are part of some government led group that is in favor of disclosure. And they are working with Congress and senators to come out with disclosure in a format that they've all agreed is the exact level of disclosure they're comfortable with. They, they are basically, they're all comfortable saying it is time to tell the American people that non-human intelligence exists. And even Tim Galladay just went on Ryan Graves podcast and he said, you know, it is time to tell the American people and the earth that the U S government has been in communication with non-human intelligence. And, you know, so, but it's basically, they don't really want to say more than that. They all just want to, they just want to say that they don't want to say what Stephen Greer is saying, which is how much technology we've figured out from yeah. that, what we can do. They don't want to go there. They just, they all, they, they, they dance just right up to the line and they just want to say, yep, they're real and we're in communication, but they don't want to reveal any of the big questions, which is, do we have anti-gravity craft? Do, what are the, um, yeah, what's our, actual military power you know do we have a space force that's gone to their planet they don't want to they just they they all are they like beating a, a drum of all we want to say is they're real ufos are real and you know um and now they are willing to say the u.s is in communication with them but they don't want to say what they communicate about or so it's like it's they they seem to me to be organized with that single mission is just get it out there. And then, you know, they want Congress and the presidents to decide, you know, what to do beyond that. But these, these guys here, they're not independent. These guys are not doing this independently. They are organized and they are all basically military. These are all, yeah. I mean, so I, I think they are still under orders. And so I think Stephen Greer is Right. I think he is right when he says Lou Elizondo is a government agent. I think all of these mm. people are working. <laughs> they're under order. They're under strict control. You know, Alex uh, Dietrich. Sorry, I called her Heinrich. It's Alex Dietrich is this uh, jet pilot. They all of their behaviors seem to me to be the behaviors of people that have been ordered to go public in the way they are with the exact level of disclosure they're allowed to talk about. And so, so my point is, I think Stephen Greer might be telling the truth that, and and for some reason, and Lou Elizondo really uh, has been calling Stephen Greer a grifter and a liar and everything yeah. when he goes on podcasts. He doesn't name Greer by name, but it's clear he's talking about Greer when he does this. But I think it's, I think it's just 
Lou just doesn't like that Greer outs him as a government agent. <laughs> I just, I just think it's, you know, but you know, I don't, I don't think it's bad that these guys are, I, I like the idea that the government has a group that is fighting and working together to try to fight against these secret keepers over here, the, the Pentagon and the CIA and the uh, corrupt congressmen. Um, but it seems transparent to me that they are, they're, they're under orders of some branch of the government to do disclosure in a certain controlled way. So, so my question is just what do you think? Is this a planned, controlled disclosure, or is it some kind of a, you know, getting getting people sort of prepped for, for bigger things to come, which which may be all planned to get us on, into this one world government thing? What, I mean, which which direction do you it's kind I mean, of silly because we're we, we don't know we can't know but we can sort of try to tune in intuitively <laughs> what do you think i mean i it, it it's clear there's two groups the secret keepers over here the pentagon raytheon lockheed mike turner maybe blackrock there's a group over here that do not want the truth to come out and i I think they, the reason the secret keepers don't want the truth to come out is because the once you know aliens are real and UFOs are real and the government's been talking to them, the next 10 truths that come out after that are devastating to the image of some people and to it's going to it's going to it's going to come out who's been committing massive financial crime who's been deceiving the congress and also who's been murdering people who murdered jfk who murdered rfk even who murdered marilyn monroe i think this is going to be like a it's going to be the house of cards is going to fall and it's going to be a domino effect of truth that is going to make some people look horrible and i think it's going to make president bush both president bushes look horrible because I, I believe, you know, the first President Bush was in charge of the CIA and the CIA and the Air Force has been deep in on this. Um, you know, so th there's some people that are fighting just to not have any of this truth come out. And then there's okay. and then there's these these this portion of the U.S. government and Congress and the Senate that are like, OK, we've got to let this truth out. And they don't care that it's going to cause a domino effect that's going to devastate the image of some of these people. They don't they apparently are okay with that, maybe because they realize they're on the better side of history and they're going to be seen as heroes. And they must have some vision for how this can work out in a decent way. <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah. They, they must believe that when this is fully revealed, they can also say to the people of Earth and the people in the U.S. that you, this is true and you're safe. You're not don't need to feel afraid because and this is the part that i think they are upset with stephen greer about they i think the truth is that the u.s government and the military must be ready to say yes anti-gravity is real and we have figured it out enough to protect ourselves from the weapons and things that can be made with this um but they might not be in a rush to say that you know out loud but it might be that's what they want to be that's probably what they're able to tell the senators and congress people behind the closed doors is like don't listen to the pentagon when they tell you you have to keep this secret because we're all going to die and be killed by the aliens or by the secret keepers they have to be able to tell marco rubio and chuck schumer look it's okay let this stuff out we are ready for any consequences we were ready for lockheed martin and their secret military group to do whatever they want because they're not going to assassinate you like they did jfk and rfk we've got We've eliminated the group, the part of the CIA that was under the control of the secret keepers and willing to kill people um, to keep the secret. That's not going to happen. The we, I'm hoping that they've, you know, narrowed down the really malicious secret keepers to just basically a corporate bureaucracy, like really taking away their ability to do any level of violence other than corporate violence and financial violence. Um, yeah. Yeah, what what do you think of? Uh, and it's come up a couple times from from certain uh, officials saying that 
you know, if the public knew everything, we it would just blow everybody away. You know, that even Greer says if it all came out all at once, it would just completely blow everybody's mind. It's ten times, you know, more strange and bizarre and interdimensional and planetary. It's just we couldn't wrap our brains around it. And I find that a little bit insulting. What about you? <laughs> um. Yeah. Uh, oh, I definitely find it personally insulting. Yeah. And I think it's, I think he's just wrong, but I, I mean, I think, um, you know, but I, I think that the reason that the disclosure, this disclosure group is okay with it being come out slowly is because they were, there was some concern about the level of shock if it came out too fast. Um, but I think humanity is, way more able to adapt and learn um i think but i mean there are going to be you know the stock market might crash there there might be some riots and some revolutions and i mean yeah there i think some things could happen i mean george floyd was enough to start uh, a mini revolution in the u.s so this i mean i see i personally it was like seven months ago that um it, it was shortly a after david grush went public on news nation and i started to you know because before david grush i i was like okay ufos are real something is going on but before him i was not convinced that the cia and the u.s government was holding alien craft i didn't that was like that was like you know that was that was I was not ready to go there to believe Bob Lazar had been telling the truth. Um, but after David Grush and uh, other whistleblowers confirmed it, I'm like, OK, well, the CIA and the Air Force, they've been and that Roswell was real. I mean, before David Grush, I did not believe Roswell was a real event <laughs> I and didn't after, when he yeah. confirmed that. And and he confirmed that before Roswell, there have been events. I'm like, OK, well, this changes everything. If that's the case, then the level of truth behind this is mind blowing. And the, the the secret keeping group has been doing this for years. Then it was it was not it was within a month of that on the same. Uh, I remember I was outside and there was a, a book released that said that JFK had uh, sent a memo to the CIA demanding all info about UFOs and UAPs. And it was like 10 days before he was killed. And it was basically like, and then uh, Chris Leto, who is a uh, awesome independent YouTuber, former jet pilot, who's been sort of, I've been sort of following along with his journey in realizing these UFOs are real. And he's been just like digging into this in the same way that I have and trying to figure out what's the truth. And he sent out a tweet that day that, and he was like, um, saying it, it, it seems clear they killed JFK that they, they you killed JFK to keep this secret. And he was just like those bastards. And it was, and it was just like, it hit me, uh, really emotionally when wow. I, when I believed that and when I realized that, and then I started researching it and it became clear that they probably also murdered Marilyn Monroe. And I mean, if you look into Marilyn Monroe's death, it is not a suicide there was like it's like oh my gosh this is so obvious that she was murdered also and then there's there's definite evidence that she was being monitored by the cia and that jfk had told her uh about the truth about aliens and that she was she was talking about telling people about this and so i had this cascade of emotions realizing that these you know because i was before that the ufos and aliens was a fascinating fun you know, topic for me to dig into, just like the most fun, fascinating mystery of my life. But at that moment, I, I just, I was became so sad and um, disgusted that, you know, these, these secret keepers felt that they had the right to just murder a president of the United States and murder his um, mistress to, to keep their stupid secret. I was just like, I mean, it, it, it made me cry. Yeah. Yeah, it, it just shows you how 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 dark this this gets. Um, and and then I went on, you know, and and that's when I, I there was a time period you can go back in my Twitter history, and I was just like, you guys do not know the level of 
rage and riots that are going to happen when the Irish American community realizes you murdered JFK to keep this secret. They, you know, it's like we're going to see Irish riots, you know, Irish Catholic riot. I mean, that's I mean, that's my like heritage in Boston and stuff. It's like the, you know, there's that right now the Irish American populace in those bars in Boston, they think UFOs and aliens are just some like silly joke, but it's going to get very serious for them once they realize you you murdered uh, JFK. Uh, it, maybe that's something. what they mean when they say it's just too much for some people. <laughs> it's gonna, yeah. it's gonna create social unrest for for a lot of people. I think you know, I I don't know that I would go so. Do you, I mean, would we really go so far as have a revolution over this? I I don't think so. I think people are gonna freak out, and you know, have big you know, you know, fire here and there and break things and scream and yell and. But I just don't see a revolution. I see, and maybe this is just my my optimism, I see that people are going to be shocked. People are going to be freaking out and demanding more and more and more answers. And I would just love to see the slate come clean. I mean, just let's get this all out, you know, just like we're trying to do with the whole Jeffrey Epstein thing, which is just now starting to to be broken open. So... Uh, wouldn't that be nice to to see um, to see this be exposed as much as possible without I mean, I, I agree that, you know, we can't expose everything. There might be certain certain security risks. But uh, but for the most part, Greer is saying we've got to release this technology for the benefit of humanity because um, right now it's being used against us. Yeah. Well, yeah, I agree with you. I don't think there's going to be. A revolution in the u.s I, I think there could be though a political revolution in the u.s i mean it could cause a well, there um, should be right <laughs> yeah i mean we're, de we're in desperate need of a yeah. political revolution in the u.s and in theory in a democracy that should be possible like a new political party could be created and because it seems like the democratic and republican parties are hopelessly corrupt and but it, it, you know, now that it seems clear the Democratic and Republican parties, uh, I mean, seems like they're not even going to allow, uh, you know, they're trying to keep like RFK Jr. and Trump off of the ballots. So they're trying to, you know, basically turn us into a banana republic. Um, oh, could you imagine if if um, Robert Kennedy Jr. is uh, is on the ballot and he gets elected. And I mean, the first thing that's going to happen is he's going to break open what happened to his uncle. And that's yeah. going to, I think, start a cascade of um, revelations. Oh, I mean, yeah, I mean, I'm, I've been that is one thing that has seemed completely set a stage set this year, you know, for when I realized, you know, JFK, this UFO thing ties to JFK and RFK's murders, that's, I think the same people killed RFK. Yep. Um, it's like, this is, if this comes out during this election year with RFK Jr. running, I mean, that's, that is going to blow things wide open. And, but it's also, it's amazing that RFK Jr. doesn't, has never talked about the UFO alien topic. He has not touched it. None of the Basically, none of the uh, presidential candidates have touched it except Vivek Ramaswamy. He said, yes, the alien UFO disclosure. He's like totally, but he is not like, uh, you know, um, but other than that, they haven't touched well, it. Well, you know, I think Robert Kennedy has, Jr. has, he's dealing with a lot of bad reputation, you know, because he's been, he's <laughs> been, he's been, you know, they've tried everything to snuff him out. Um, and he doesn't want to add fire to that fuel. So I think that's why he's, uh, I mean, fuel to that fire. So he doesn't, he doesn't have to deal with that alien issue. Cause that would just be a mess. Um, well, but I actually but, think that's the one that he could, that actually is not a mess. That's the one that, you know, I think you could run with, you know, you have Chuck Schumer just, I mean, you have the, the leader of the Senate, but I mean, that's, it also seems just set up like Chuck Schumer, Senator Rounds, Marco Rubio, these guys, that's a, those are the most powerful Democrats, Democrats and Republican senators, any presidential candidate that decides to say, this is a, a real issue we need to get, become honest about, you have these senators potentially could back you. 
could come out and say, I agree. I mean, it, so, but it's like, no one has done it yet. It's just, uh, it, but you know, there's a lot of time. This could happen. At I, any I bet time this you, year. I bet you he would, he's, I bet he's got a plan <laughs> since we're on speculation here. I think his, his plan is to get into office open his uncle's records, find out why his uncle was killed, and that's going to crack open the whole, you know, UFO thing. That would well, be kind of, yeah, go ahead. You'd have to get into office for that. I think the question is what happens before the election? How much, okay. and actually, I think, you know, I think everyone has a plan, a strategy. I think, I think Trump, Biden, and RFK, they all have to know the truth, and they all have to have a plan on how they're going to use this alien UFO and a JFK assassination files and the truth about Epstein. These are all like massive things that they could make a commitment to revealing the full truth about. And I actually think they're probably Epstein. A lot of evidence seems to indicate he was a part of the secret keepers in the CIA. He was, yeah. his job seems to have been to uh, get powerful people onto his Island, get them compromised by doing something and then blackmail them. It seems that, that, basically was his job and you know i'm not even and it you know and he still clearly was murdered while in federal custody and covered up by the attorney general of the united states uh, tucker carlson just did an interview with epstein's brother and if you listen to that it's like his brother has been looking into this um the autopsy shows that epstein was not did not hang himself his neck was broken like by a karate chop I and mean, his neck was oh and, my goodness and in the um the uh the marks on his neck did not match the way the marks would look if you were hung by your bedpost they mark they match they're horizontal they match what it looks like if you were garroted by like a phone by a power cord to a light oh, and his i mean his body was uh, you know the cameras weren't functional the guards said they were asleep it's it's just like and um the 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 literally the guys who did the autopsy said it was not suicide but then another medical uh, examiner declared it a suicide because basically her evidence was cuz someone said he had tried to commit suicide you know before in prison which also his brother says is not true he was attacked by another prisoner Anyways, oh boy, <laughs> what a he mess. had a hearing. He had a hearing five days scheduled for five days after his uh, death. That was a hearing on bail because he had not been granted bail. And if he had been granted bail, he could have gotten out of prison and started, you know, living his life. Yeah, so, and that might have been a problem for a lot of people. Yeah. So. so anyway, so it's so Epstein might be. We might have to add to the list of the uh, murders done by the same corrupt group of secret keepers yeah um yeah not that he, not necessarily that epstein knew about was connected with ufos and aliens but it seems like it's the same group that is been controlling and manipulating things behind the scenes this group in the cia that's been hiding they've been using dicey tactics for years to threaten and scare people and blackmail people to keep their secret and it looks like epstein was just a part of that club oh boy yeah. Oh boy, stay tuned so, for more. Yeah. Yeah. So, oh, so in any case, so Stephen Greer seems to be outside of this this club and he seems to be in favor. I mean, the thing that I wonder about with him is is he um is his agenda completely pure? Is he completely pure of heart? And I I so want I mean, I so want to believe everyone, Lou Elizondo, Christopher Mellon, David Grush, I just want to believe everyone is in their heart trying to do what's best for humanity. You know, some of these, you know, people are, they're super into, you know, nationalism, you know, the United States, they really see that as their club. I don't think Stephen Greer is a super United States nationalist type of he's, guy. He's not, a, he's not a politician. He's not in any way connected to government. He comes from a healthcare background, which is really... Yeah really different that i mean that's why he's kind of outside the, the whole box there so mm -hmm. and he's a meditator and you know yeah. i've listened to him talk about meditation and so it's like it's um i mean i believe it's it's really hard to be evil and to practice meditation it's just like you know it's it, the whole practice of meditation is 
about trying to be honest about yourself and try to find the truth about consciousness, consciousness and reality. And I think my impression, he does have an ego, you know, I can tell sure. he, has, he has some arrogance <laughs> ego and he does seem to, you know, like a little bit of attention and he, but, um, but you know, that it's, that is not uncommon. And, uh, it's not a, it's not a fatal flaw of character. He does seem to just say, let's it, but it does seem odd to me, his claims, his insistence that there is absolutely no evil, um, dangerous, malicious, uh, non-human intelligence. But, uh, I, I'd um, love to just ask him. I'd love he, to ask he him. Does, if you listen to the, to the last video, he, he, like I say, he admits to, um, pretty nasty stuff interdimensionally. So I, I yeah, I'm not, clear in my head if he's saying there's no bad aliens you know yeah we can't know i mean there's so much we don't know and that's why it can become um, a real anxiety problem for people so um yeah i there are questions and how how can we listen to what he says and keep one foot on the pier you know without sailing off into into that whole story so that's where meditation comes in if we can stay grounded and centered in our own essence in our own being then then we can listen to all the sides of the stories uh, you know everybody's side and and we don't have to you know fight it or agree or join a party or you know um get all involved in in reactivity if we can stay centered, focused, grounded in our own being, we can touch on whether that feels right for us or not, uh, without being in, in caught up in the emotional, um, you know, uh, reactivity of it all. Because it's very scary for a lot of people. The whole thing, the whole entire thing, is scary. Yeah. That's why it's so so long. To, it's taking so long to get people to even look at it. I think because it because it is scary. Yeah, it's hard to change your worldview. To, it is to shift it and to learn. It really is. Yeah. So, well, well did we want to do a little uh, five ten minute meditation yeah. just to let's uh, let's do a concluding five ten minute guided meditation as we've yeah. done at many shows before. I am. I'm ready when you are. Okay, I got it. just as my crow starts crowing, my uh, my rooster's out there crowing at the front door. <laughs> Can you hear him? <laughs> oh, it's it'll be a, a wonderful addition to the. We'll meditation. add it into yeah. the meditation. Yeah. yeah. All right. Let's <laughs> let's just do a nice settling in here. Let's start with a little bell. So well, let's, let's just start with a couple of deep breaths. I mean, this is all lots of information and it can take our energy and just scatter it. So for now, let's just start to call that energy back in. Let's just begin to find ourself sitting right where we are and just acknowledging our surroundings. Let's just start with that. A couple of deep breaths and acknowledge our surroundings. And you get to listen and acknowledge what you're hearing, any sounds coming in through the ears. Feel the feet on the floor, the butt on the cushion, hands on the lap, where, whatever position you're in, let's just be in our body for a moment. This is our anchoring place. As we begin to settle in on our breath and noticing what's coming in through our senses, let's see if we can become aware of that pure conscious point of awareness that's observing all of this. So 
It's like we're centered in an ocean of awake consciousness. Sounds are happening, sensations coming in through the skin. Muscle tension, we become the observer of it. And just feel our, whatever we want to call our self, this one pointed place of awareness. We start to realize that this is not a limited awareness. It can expand in all directions. This awareness is omnipresent everywhere. And as we begin to quiet, go into this deep space of conscious awareness, we can sense we're not alone. There are a lot of us out here. We're all connected. This point of conscious awareness is not just mine or yours. Everything has this point of awareness. And underneath it all, there is the one mind. We are like waves on the ocean. We rise up, we exist for a moment in time. We can look out and see all the other waves. And then we go back in. And when we go back in through meditation, we have the advantage of also seeing what's in the water, if you want to use that metaphor. There's a lot more going on underneath the waves. And this is the field of consciousness we all live in. Every sentient, existing awareness is connected to this ocean. It's in this ocean. In physics, they're starting to recognize that this ocean is actually plasma. We're just beginning to understand how it works, but it's showing how we are all connected. And what we express and what we attract is completely dependent on where we are in our emotional body, 
You could look at the chakras. Each chakra is a portal to a certain level of consciousness. So if you rest your consciousness in a state of joy, that's what you will attract. So from that portal, we can invite any higher consciousness to communicate with us. So a lot of people would call this an insight meditation where you can gain insights just through being silent. So I would encourage anyone to practice this for a few minutes every day. Thanks, Matt. Thank you, Dora. Till next time. Have a great week. <laughs>